The New York Fed adds another $115.14 billion in short-term liquidity to markets. Additions include $80.14 billion in overnight repurchase agreement and $35 billion 14-day repo. The Federal Reserve is nothing but a loan shark for the deficit spending government. It's the government's fault for all this monetary mess, not the banksters. They're just profiting from the control of money creation and all assets traded in the stock, bond, and commodity markets. Get out of the casino and get into silver hoarding or use your dollars to buy real hard assets like farmland, real estate and gold. It's the only safe plan in preparation for the coming dollar collapse. Period. Expect a trigger event in the coming months for a global reset. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. The government claims that the economy is excellent, but rail, trucking, autos, and credit burdens tell a very different story. Another report says that the largest bank in the world, JP Morgan, has reconfigured its entire portfolio in order to take advantage of Federal Reserve liquidity injections, repos, despite destabilizing the system by no longer participating in interbank lending that banks usually do among themselves without the Fed. And Deutsche Bank is rumored to be already declared bankrupt. The banks don't trust each other or are out for themselves like JP Morgan, or are failing like Deutsche Bank. But yet American public is not purchasing American silver eagles like years ago but are continuing to trust the banks. The public is asleep. The Federal Reserve cannot borrow or create the amount of currency needed to continue its operations fast enough. What is going on? What are they afraid of? It appears that JP Morgan had the narcotic proceeds confiscated, and to cover their cash losses, they raided the repo holdings and drained the pool. The actions of one bank have forced, excused the Federal Reserve's attempts to bail. Watch closely as the Federal Reserve balance sheet balloons to at least $8 trillion, while the gross national debt climbs above $33 trillion to $35 trillion over the next 12 to 18 months. The increase in debt is money the bankers owe to American citizens. The bankers are all criminals. They get away with stealing wealth from the people. Those in charge of protecting the people are just as guilty. The only winners are those who convert Fed debt notes into real money, silver, and gold. In the past two days, JP Morgan has lopped $1 off the spot price of silver. Two massive episodes of naked shorting. I see it this way, it's like a bookie who only takes eight bets on the team that they know is going to lose and two on the winning team, on a game that they see the outcome of. They get to keep 60% of the take every time. The same way the algorithm is programmed to reap the profits from futures and options trading. Price fixing. All in the guise to keep the dollar worth something in world markets. Every country playing the dollar game gets robbed blind. When will they learn? Investors have nothing until they cash out and convert their Fed debt notes, to pay in full tangible assets. Ponzi scheme statements are not an asset, just a wishful promise that eventually becomes worthless. Keep on stacking that physical silver in your possession, like the crooks at JP Morgan, are doing. Meanwhile Pig Ebola has decimated China's supply of protein. Zero Hedge has now reported the contagion is currently impacting Russian swine herd. Grains production in the US is subpar, but prices are being suppressed in the futures market. Just like they do to silver in order to misdirect the public consciousness. This is the third seal of revelation that Bo Polney said early this year had been opened. This means famine and worse inflation for things people need. Recent videos by Bo Polney warn people to quit trying to pick up dimes in front of the steamroller. An amp is to bring down the current economic system, the globalists must create chaos whereby the assets of 6 billion people can be stolen. More easily done with little resistance if the 6 billion are simply killed off. So the protein that keeps them alive must be removed, but the blame can't be placed on the globalists. Better than a virus in China and Russia kill the pigs, and lousy weather in the US destroys the corn crop. The goal of the globalists is to engineer desperation. Create a catastrophe and then force the masses to beg for help, that the banksters at IMF will offer with their SDRs. And what will be collateralized to secure that aid? So a trigger event is coming for a reset, but the banksters want to ensure that they are not blamed or seen as the cause. 
Overt money printing is not the only method at the disposal of globalists to destroy the greenback. Famine can play an equal part in causing the loss of the dollar's world reserve status and its devaluation. Better than our wealth is stolen in the midst of chaos. The goal of the Fed and the globalists is to dismantle the dollar and the US economic system at the same time, to make way for something new, SDR. It seems that all roads lead to worldwide societal collapse and an associated mass die-off. Number 1. Maybe for assorted historical reasons, the system is exhausted, and most of society's institutions are corrupt and ineffectual, and collapse is now inevitable. Number 2. Maybe there is just one globalist criminal gang, and the Fed is their tool for provoking or focusing civil war among and between clueless political groups. Number 3. Then again, maybe there are competing criminal gangs and it's a fight to the death among, between the different factions or coalitions of factions. Or number 4. Maybe there is a faction of white hats, who are waging fourth generation warfare to the death against one or more black hat gangs factions. Or number 5. Maybe the gangs factions are waiting for a catastrophic natural disaster to hide behind or assist. Or number 6. Maybe everything is just fine. Not. The money system is, was a policy vehicle to centralize world power leading to world government. The onset of electronic currency is imminent. Meantime the counterfeiting continues to line the pockets of the brethren banks, which through the use of fractional banking, using free money to ensure hard assets, real estate, resources, precious metals, are acquired via collateralization. They have bankrupted the world and will bring forth a new system, already devised and ready to be implemented, to replace the old one. Simultaneously they own all the resources of the globe. Powerful position to be in when sitting at the table, to slice and dice the spoils. Connecting the dots of finance, centralization, and world hegemony are the keys to unlocking this agenda. Both Wall Street bankers and the government, including the Federal Reserve, hold great sway over the economy. This is true with bankers and central banks across the world. When forced to ask which is the worse of these two evils the answer is very troubling. Government wins hand down. We elect politicians to lead, protect and guide us, we do not elect or appoint bankers. Years ago President Eisenhower warned the American people about the industrial-military complex, but nobody warned us an even more evil alliance that of the financial-political complex. The Fed does not work for the American people. Its goal is to enrich those who own and control it. Period. In 1932 the M2 money supply was about $50 billion, Today it is about $14,539 billion. That number is the consolidated bank deposit debts from the liability sections of all U.S. banks' balance sheets. One question one might ask is how did the banks get so deeply in debt to their customers, rubes? The answer is that they created the deposit debts out of thin air, and loaned them out, to individuals, businesses, and governments. That is one hell of a racket, to have the government granted privilege of creating money out of thin air, loaning it out, and collecting interest on the loans. Any reasonable conclusion is that we have become indentured servants to the banks, even if we do not ourselves borrow, because the interest cost must be paid by someone, and it becomes part of the price of goods and services provided by those who do borrow. And since governments in the US borrow heavily, taxes must be high enough for governments to pay the interest on their loans also. The banking system doesn't ever need to pay these deposit liabilities. Just think about this a second. The money supply is made up of bank liabilities, and these liabilities can only be paid by bank liabilities. If you want to be paid what the bank owes you, your savings account balance or checking account balance, you can only be paid with bank debt. If you cash a check at your local bank for Federal Reserve notes, you are just swapping one form of bank debt for another. You can't go to a bank and redeem Federal Reserve notes or your checking account balance for gold or silver coins. This means that all the money supply is the functional equivalent of bills of credit. Federal Reserve notes are the functional equivalent of bills of credit. Your checking account balance as in your checkbook are the functional equivalent of bills of credit, where instead of the banking printing up the notes, they give you a checkbook to do the printing for them. Bills of credit are notes issued by government intended to circulate as money. Since the federal government created the Federal Reserve Bank to issue bills of credit and states franchise banking corporations to issue bills of credit, 
The banks simply are under authorization of the federal and state government doing what the federal government is not authorized to do and which the states are constitutionally specifically prohibited from doing. Don't they know that acts of an agent are legally acts of the principal? I fully expect that when Civil War II breaks out, high on the list of revenge killings will be politicians, judges, bureaucrats, and bankers. Before that time don't expect the Constitution to be followed by ending this scam. Everyone participating is far too deeply involved to let this scam be exposed for what it is, and it is far too profitable to be ended. Masters rarely free their slaves voluntarily. Now to make yourself worthy of surviving, you must stand for principles and values that are bigger than you are, like our constitution and real money. Although we prepare to survive by storing food, water, gold, etc. it does not necessarily guarantee we will prevail. Survival in itself is meaningless if we don't at the same time eliminate the enemy creating the chaos. For a person could just as quickly, sell out to the globalists and help them, in order to stay alive, like Soros did, and that person would probably have, better odds of survival, than someone farming their own homestead and scrounging a living off your preps, if survival alone was your only goal. The enemy, the banksters must be taken out, so close your brokerage accounts, get out of their system, and buy gold. Everyone needs to pull all of their money, if they have any, out of the banks. They need our money in the system to continue their program to own everything. We leave money in the banks, they pay us no interest, buy stocks, and make money with our money. Wake up, folks. The reason for all of the money printing is because the banking system did not have enough money to buy all the debt being issued to fund ours out of control, with no limit budget. The Fed simply prints enough, gives it the banks, they buy the debt with those printed dollars. And, as Mr. Griffin says, most people do not understand this as the media and the president do not tell us what is really going on. Besides getting your money out of the banking system, get out of any accounts that have a tax liability to the government, i.e., IRAs and 401ks. They are likely all inequities now. When the time is right for the government, they could convert those to bonds paying little or no interest. The government is broke, and they want, need the money from these accounts. And there is a lot of money tied up in these accounts. Getting out of IRAs and 401ks, although difficult, is probably the only way to prevent the government from converting your assets in these accounts into government bonds that pay little to no interest. Before, we are all forced to buy 1,000-year T-bonds yielding negative interest, that destroys our wealth. Let's buy 1,000-year gold coins yielding zero interest that preserves our wealth. And end the Federal Reserve, it financed the destruction of Earth and humanity. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.